Hi everyone, this is Chef Nicholas Lodge here and welcome to this part three of the succulents. Now there are two other previous episodes of the succulents, one which deals with how to make realistic succulents using my new fabulous Flower Pro succulent mold and then the second video shows how to make little miniature succulents. In this video I'm going to show you this third part, how to actually use those on cakes wired succulents and also the little mini succulents. I'm going to show you how to do little mini cupcakes, farines and other dessert goodies as well. So let's get started. So in the first part of the video, part one, I showed how to obviously create these amazing succulents using this one incredible mold. And so that is in part one. And then in part two, I moved on to show how to make little miniature succulents, uh, which we're going to use in this video uh, to decorate little uh, farines, little mini cupcakes, macarons, and things like that. So this is really fun if you're doing a wedding and you had a wedding cake and then you had a dessert. Uh, bar or uh, sort of obviously you're doing little amenities like macarons to serve with coffee and tea. Uh, these are really, really nice elements you can add to the pieces. Of course, these are all possible to do in air drying clay as well. So these will be really realistic to put in a little pot in a bathroom and give as a gift to somebody. And uh, they're really nice because they don't need water in and last forever. And uh, so on this video, I'm going to show you how to use what we created in part one and part two. I'm going to show you how to use the wired succulents put onto a cake. In my various Flower Pro videos, like my peonies, my lilies, my French tulips, I have lots of different uh, videos that of course show how to put the pieces onto cakes. So anyway, what I've done is I've matched this uh, rolled fondant or sugar paste to this uh, mint green color. This is called jadeite. So this was, I collect jadeite pieces. It's a very lovely little sort of mint green color. Um, glass. Uh, it's like for similar to milk glass, but it's this very soft green. And um, what I've done is I colored the sugar paste to rolled fond to match the uh, cake stand, the pedestal that this is going to go on to. Now, um, so just use a mint green um, to create that color. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I actually did the uh, top of the cake. Uh, the top of this cake has a a sort of a sort of a natural torn edge and a little bit of texture and this is nice to go with the succulents. So uh, when we create that what I'm going to do is uh, I've already rolled out some paste and I'm just showing you a small piece of this so it explains the concept I use. So of course you'd measure um, the how wide the cake is, the circumference of the cake. And then, so if, for example, that might be, you know, 30 centimeters or 20 inches, whatever length that needs to be. And of course, you need to think about the height of the cake, the depth of the cake. This might be seven and a half centimeters. It might be 10 centimeters deep, you know, three or four inches. So anyway, you roll out your paste. So obviously you roll this in a long strip. The, there's going to be big enough like a ribbon or a bandage to go around the cake. And I wanted just to show you how I created the texture so what I actually did is I used the calorie um, texture and uh, you take some cling film, some plastic wrap, and you lay that on top of the paste. So you're just gonna lay that on top of your paste. Just make sure it's sort of opened up and just lay that on the top. So obviously you make a strip to cover the length of your piece. And of course, if it's a large cake, you may need to roll this directly onto the table. And then I'm going to use the um, calorie texture. Now I use this for texture. This is the way I actually do leather. So if you were making like leather books for a graduation, um, you could use this technique as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the calorie texture mat and just pressing this all over the plastic wrap or cling film. All right, so this gives this sort of nice, nice sort of textural detail. All right, and texture is very in vogue at the moment with obviously wedding cakes and things. So you get a little more like a stucco type of look. And then what I would do is you need a strip of paper big enough. So of course you can tape like two pieces of tape paper together. So then you turn this over, all right, and just pop it onto the, so this is the, the back of the piece here. And then you're going to cut the edge and use a cutting wheel like this or, so, or a knife. So you cut the bottom, this will be the bottom edge. And then for example, if your cake, if your cake was going to be seven and a half centimeters, um, like which is fairly normal height in England, uh, which is basically three inches, 
if it's going to be seven and a half centimeters, what you would do is you just use like a, I'm using here my companion tool. So I mark that and I'm just going to sort of score a line on here. So this is going to be the height of the cake. Okay. And then what I found worked really well for this effect, because what I'm going to, what I want is an effect like a sort of natural edge. And it's also going to be almost torn, so it looks a little bit like paper. And in paper crafts, we often use this sort of look uh, like the raw edge. So I'm going to use my companion tool. And then with my companion tool, I'm actually going to just, just outside that line on to extend the height of this a little bit. You're going to just going to use your companion tool but going to not score all the way through. You see I've actually scored here, but not all the way through. And then what you do, you're going to just tear this. So you just tear this paste away. And you see you will get this really nice sort of natural edge onto the paste. All right, and then what I would normally do is uh, then I would put some uh, like depending on how I'm attaching this, if it's going to ganache, you can just obviously just spray that with water or you can put a little bit of vegetable fat or shortening onto this. And you actually would lay your cake and you roll your cake onto this. So while your cake is cold, you roll this on. And this is like the pull the panel method or bandage method for a cake. But it just, it gives you this nice, uh, this nice look to the top edge of the cake, this sort of raw edge. It has a very nice organic look which you use for, looks really good with the succulents. Now, once you have uh, completed that, then I'm going to, next I'm going to take a little of my um, sugar paste, my rolled fondant, and I put this into a container. And what I've done is I've just added some water with a spray bottle. All right, so use a little bit of water here. And then you're just gonna mix this up so you're making like a softened um, icing. And we're gonna use that then to, to attach the border but also you'd use that on the panel to actually fill in the back of the panel. So when you do panel methods, you use that to uh, uh, actually fill in the back. I'm just gonna take a little bit, I'm gonna cut this off, comparable to about a number two pipe into a nozzle or tip. Next step is going to be to do the border. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually gonna use the mold, all right? So um, you can see here, on the bottom of the cake, we actually have done the border and I've used a half of a succulent mold. In several of my uh, books, I've used parts of the mold to make the border. So this is a really nice way to sort of uh, tie in with the theme, but also means you have the border created as well. Now what we would do there is you just take a little bit of the rolled fondant, the sugar paste that you have, that you have left from covering the cake and Usually when we modify fondant, like for example in book number four, um, it talks about taking 60 grams of the pine cones and then adding an, an eighth of a teaspoon of tylose or CMC. Here, what I'm gonna do, because I don't need really a lot, you can just take a little bit of the sugar paste and you just dip it into some tylose powder and you just mix that through and it will almost, and a little tiny bit of vegetable fat, vegetable shortening, that will also, will firm it up. All right, so it will almost instantly firm that up a little bit because straight sugar paste is a little bit too soft to use in the molds. Now we're going to use the succulent mold. Now there are two ways to do this, all right? You can actually use this like we did when we made the succulents. We're gonna use the second uh, two largest. Uh, this is the drop pearl one. So this is obviously made you to make the succulents, all right, which I showed in video one. But, um, so that was made actually with a number five small. So you can take a ball of paste, it wants to just go through the number five hole. All right, and so you can of course just make several of those. All right, so you just would make several of those like that and keep them under a container. So we can use this technique. So remember you got a little tiny bit of vegetable shortening in here. So this is how we made the half succulent. And all I do is just place this in the mold and then you can press in with your, and just, you'll have a little tiny bit of excess paste. So taking your flexi scraper, just gonna take that off with your flexi scraper. All right, so if we fill the mold cavity, and you're just gonna release that. And you see how that's gonna give you the, 
the little tiny border. So these will be used around the bottom of the cake, all right? And the other way you can do that is just take a little piece of paste, all right? So you don't have to actually measure this. So you're just going to take a little ball of paste, just going to push it into the mold, and you see I'm pushing it towards the bottom of the mold. And then again, I'm going to use a saw in action. I will just saw that off and just remove the extra paste there, like that. All right, so again, that's the second option. All right, so you can either use number five or just make some little piece of paste. Now, you can um, make, you know, several of these, maybe 12, 15 of these. And then what we're gonna do is, uh, we'll take these and attach them around the cake. There's a really nice way to do it. And the other thing is, of course, it means we keep the color uh, this jadeite sort of color, this vintage jadeite color, the same. Okay, so just going to use a little bit of the, so just come in here. So all I do here is just going to put a little bit of this. So I'm just putting a line of that softened fondant around the bottom. And then I would just going to put the little pearls, little like all you would pearls, like a hard drop pearl. So these will just go around here, like this would be the second one. And you can finish off with the third one. So you can just tuck that inside the fir first one. All right, and you start at the back of the cake. So that will just sort of fill, fill in the bottom of the cake. So you see that's gonna give you, so it almost looks similar to a piped shell, um, like you could achieve that with Kerry Griffith's um, creative cake system. But this is obviously actually just using half the succulent. But in many, many of my cakes, I've used uh, poppy parts or I've used uh, lily stamens and buds and things like that to make uh, different types of decoration to the cake. Now, next we're gonna move on to, um, to work with the succulents. And so I'm going to, the spray on the cake, I'm gonna use the large and small of the sort of, uh, the cup spoon succulent. This is the large, medium, and small that I showed in video number one. I'm going to use the larger and the smaller one. I'm going to use the elongated uh, succulent we have here, and I'm going to use, to match the border, I'm going to use this one here. Now, what I'm going to do, um, there are many ways you can uh, insert flowers into cakes. You can use like little, these are called posy picks, all right, where you actually can in, put the wire in, cut the wire, put it into there and insert it into the cake. You can also use poly dowels. I'm showing you here actually using uh, small straws, all right? So this is, a, this is a, like a little small cocktail straw. So you can cut these. And so what I do is I will cut the straw little bit longer than the stem. And then I will then put this into here. I'm just gonna slide this up. So this would just slide up to the wire. You can cut that down. So I'm cutting it a little bit longer than the wire. And then what I would normally do is I will plug this. Now there's a couple of ways to do that. You could actually use a softened fondant. So we could take the softened fondant and actually fill that, you just pipe, and then you just sort of pipe and pull that away. So that fills that with softened fondant and you just let it dry for a few minutes. And also you can take a little tiny piece of white flour paste or gum paste. And you're just going to put a little small piece into there and break that off there. And it just means that when you insert this into the cake, if you've got like, say for example, chocolate buttercream, it won't be forced on the bottom of the flower stem and make it messy. So it keeps everything very, very clean looking. So I've already prepped the, the wires on these, but this is the way that I will put them in. And when I show you like using them on sort of desserts and things, you can again use the straws or you could use a poly dowel. Um, if you're doing a larger dessert, you could actually put the wire into the middle of the poly dowel and then obviously that could be taken out. So it means it's not gonna get messy. Next, I'm going to, um, I'm going to take my pliers and with my pliers, I'm going to start to insert the flowers into the cake. Now, of course, this could be done in a total contrast, but I match this uh, color to the jadeite color. 
here. Now, um, you're going to make a hole, you can use, uh, you usually want to use something that's about comparable to the size of the straw. All right, so um, this, for example, paintbrush uh, handle, this is about the sort of same size as the diameter of the straw. So, um, you know, or you can use a stick or something. And so I will, um, I've already made some holes in my cake here. So you're just going to make the holes. So the, I've got these holes are at a slight, the ones going out on the outside are at an angle. And then again, this one is sort of straight and that one and there's a slight angle. So the, these three are at a slight angle. This one is just straight. Now I've got the, this is the uh, succulent, the beaded succulent. And what I've done is I've actually bent that at a right angle. So that is gonna go into here. So you, so you just push that in so the straw just disappears. So the drawer's straw is just visible at the top. And of course we can arrange that. And so that's going to sit into here. Then I'm going to put in the, the large succulent. I'm using a large succulent. It's going to go into, into the top here. All right. Then I'm going to have the compact one here. This is going to sit. So I will put the compact one in here. And then this is the elongated one. Of course, once you get it in position, you can can move them out a little bit. So you see I've got the, and then I'm going to put the medium one is going to go into here. All right, so I'm going to go into here with the medium one. I'm just supporting this with my hand so I can get that into, into place there like so. I'm just going to move these around with your fingers. Remember, because they're all wired, it's very easy to, to do that. And here you see you have a really nice, beautiful arrangement of succulents. A very, very simple cake, but perfect to uh, use for this type of uh, design. All right, so a lot of times uh, people that have a sort of a modern wedding use succulents is very, very nice. And that's just an easy way to use the straws and put the succulents into. So this cake was decorated with my uh, wedding foliage mold. This is my Flower Pro wedding foliage mold. So I used all six leaves that the actual uh, mold makes, all the eucalyptus that are in there, three of the varieties of eucalyptus we used on this. But this will also be perfect for example, for the succulents. And uh, this is decorated, so very sort of rustic style as well. So obviously a white tall cake. And then what I've done here is I've used um, my Flower Pro hoops. These are the MDF Flower Pro hoops, but these work wonderful also for your succulents. And this one, I've actually taken some sizal string and just put through there. Now I have uh, two separate videos on uh, the using the hoops. One for more um, flowers for a wedding cake, like David Austin roses, sweet peas and flowers. Then I also have a Christmas one, which shows you my poinsettia and uh, some of my other Christmas foliage. And then in book four, I've shown using these also with the uh, using the winter foliage mold. And uh, this um, would, would be really nice to use with the succulents. So of course you can watch the videos on this, but really taking the succulents. So you see you actually thread the succulents through here and you have the, say the large, medium and small, that would fit perfectly. So you could have the large and then you could do a medium and the small and you could just use those. You could mix the succulents up. Um, you can do different style succulents. And also if you're using, uh, for example, the beaded one, you can actually sort of with the beaded one, you can actually wrap that round. You see, so it wraps around like this. It looks very, very attractive. And you can use those for, um, for the topper of a cake. And uh, it's nice for, you know, sort of rustic cakes, naked, semi-naked cakes as well. And uh, to use the succulent to, uh, as I said, for in alternative to the eucalyptus. Now also with this, um, these mold, uh, the, the uh, hoops, this is the um, mirror one, which look, the mirror one looks really, really good with also the succulents. So if you want a more modern contemporary look with the succulents, uh, again, you can use that uh, with the succulents. Uh, looks very nice. And remember, this is available in both the mirror 
finish to the right or the mirror finish the um, the spray to the right or to the left because this is of course they've got a gray back and then there's also a clear one as well which again would look really really good so those are the flower pro hoops and then my new craft hoops these were brought out for book number four for doing the wreath on the top of the cake and again this is a really nice uh, way if you're doing a sort of a modern contemporary style cake like i showed you put in the succulents in you could literally just have three succulents or whatever you wanted to do and again you can wrap the the beady succulent or the elongated pearl succulent around there and then you would uh, sort of put the succulents in and attach this so you'd have this on the front of the wedding cake so the succulents look really really nice with uh, this ring this sort of wreath idea and of course for craft as well you can make these come in a set of five you can make a really nice succulent wreath and so you could then obviously put the succulents on here put a ribbon or some string on there and hang it as well um, so those are just some ideas using uh, some of my Flower Pro um, items uh, for uh, an alternative for a wedding cake. So I'm going to show you now some ideas for like little desserts and uh, cupcakes and uh, verines. Now verine is a layered dessert and uh, verines can be made in usually mostly in uh, plastic or glass uh, containers. These are ones that you can buy in party supplies for party supply. You know, this is an oval verine. It's a long tall one, you know, so you sort of make like a layer dessert into this. And this works really well with um, the chocolate theme and obviously with the, um, with obviously the succulents. So I'm going to show you this uh, round one. So with a verine, uh, you know, typically what you're going to do is obviously use, uh, you want some texture, um, obviously buttercreams or ganaches, sponge cake brownies. And, uh, but as I said, so I'm going to show you a little bit of uh, both of those things. Now, first of all, I'm going to put some, uh, these are some chocolate cookies. So these are obviously Oreo cookies and uh, these come with chocolate, with chocolate fill, filling in them. So you just take these and uh, usually just put them in a food processor. And this is going to give, give you um, edible dirt. So this is going to give you, it looks like soil. Okay, and this is just literally the cream uh, filling and the cookie combined together. You can also, of course, make cookies or biscuits and uh, you could add some chocolate buttercream to them as well. But uh, a lot of times, and you can also buy Oreo cookie crumbs, which are already um, for cheesecakes and things. Um, so we're going to start off. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put a little um, some of the cookie crumb into the bottom here. Now this is going to give texture. All right, so this is going to give some texture into the bottom here. And usually when you're um, putting things in like cake and cookie crumbs, I usually use, uh, like for example, you can use a sort of a plastic um, little bowl. You can use a sort of something like, for example, like this, the bottom of this. This is um, used for a tart tapper. This is a tempo. This is for when you make tart shells. So this just helps to compact the this into the bottom because I want to sort of make this almost like you would a cheesecake as the base. Then I'm going to put some sea salt caramel. So this is some caramel with fleur de sel French sea salt. So I'm going to then put a little bit of this into the bottom. So this gives obviously a nice contrast. So I'm just going to put some caramel just float to the side there. All right, so you see you have the sort of the caramel and then the Fleur de sel. Now I'm using, uh, you can use in a cookie cutter. Um, you just want to find a cookie cutter that's uh, sort of just a little bit smaller than the size of your making. Or in fact, um, what you also can do is like if you're doing unusual shapes like squares, you can actually use this and actually cut out. So if you cut out your brownies, you can actually use that to cut out the square uh, pieces of brownie. All right, this is a fudge brownie that I'm using here. Brownie works very well because it's sort of dense, but you could use more of a sponge cake as well. And uh, then I'm going to take um, the cake part of that. So I'm going to put my cake part of that into here. Again, I'm going to just going to put that in. So you have the chocolate chocolate cake. So just put that down so it sort of hits the. So this is going to sort of give you the layered. I'm going to put a little bit of more caramel on here. So I'm just doing a layer of caramel. But there's lots of different flavor components you can 
you can use, but this just works really well. And I'm gonna take some chocolate buttercream. Now, I'm using here um, a bag. So, you know, this is also really works well with a flexi scraper. So you can use your, that helps to put the buttercream down into the bottom. So I'm gonna cut the end off. You can use a pipe in tip for that, or you can just use the bag. But see, this is a good way to use your flexi scraper. And then I'm gonna use my, so I'm gonna just work this onto the top. So this is gonna represent like the soil. All right, so you have some nice flavor profiles there. And then I'm gonna take my, you can work when you're doing this, of course you can work on a uh, piece of parchment paper. So I'm gonna put some cookie crumbs. So this will represent the, the soil on this. You can just put this all over or you can just put it sort of in the, the middle area of this as well. I'm just going to And then we will take the, so I'm going to add now some little chocolate rocks. Now these are, again, you can buy these in party supply, they're called chocolate rocks and uh, they're actually chocolate with a sort of a little bit like an M&M or Smarty uh, sort of, uh, and they look really nice. And I love these because they're sort of uh, come in different colors. Again, tying in with our colors, I'm gonna use the, the sort of the green colored ones here. And the natural, but you know, if you were doing sort of, uh, so you can put blue here. Now we're just gonna put a brown, down brown one there as well. And then you take your, so then you can use your um, little, um, these are the ones made on spaghetti. So this is all totally edible. So you can just break this off and then you're just using your Tweezers, I'm gonna just put this in, and that just goes into the little farine here like this. So this is obviously when you're serving dessert, you can use for small little desserts like these, a demi tasse or espresso spoon, so little tiny spoons like this. You could also use um, plastic spoons. You can buy little sort of plastic forks, you know, so you would use sort of something that's gonna fit to the scale of the dessert you're doing. But this is uh, called a verine, and here we have just a round one. Um, this is a verine actually in a yogurt pot, uh, pot the um, Oye French yogurts. So they, you can keep the pots and this is really nice to serve for a special dinner party or things. And again, I've got layers of the chocolate cookie crumb and the caramel and the cake, the brownie cake and things in there. So of course you could use those and something a little bit bigger. This is one that is a succulent that's made without any um, that's got nothing on it. I just use spaghetti and just break it off when you can use the spaghetti in there. And if you are attaching this, you can use, generally if you don't have any uh, support there, you can just get and use a little bit of chocolate buttercream and just put that on the top. So that's sort of totally edible. Um, and then you can use, um, again, this is a sort of a tall one. So of course you've got, you can put the sort of same type of little small succulents in there. This is a larger version of this. So it's a little bit like almost a piece of cake to be enough for a couple of people. And again, what I've done is actually use, this is the uh, vintage shade eye. This is actually a little container. Of course, this is suitable to put food in as well. So I've just layered that in the same way. And I put my cookie crumbs in there. And then what I would do is this is really nice for a gift for somebody, like somebody who has a birthday, you can actually sort of make this as a birthday cake. And then you could use a succulent, all right? So you could use a succulent. This has obviously got a straw in there. And again, we would take the succulent and this would go into the cake here. And you see you've got then, so somebody you could give that to somebody for their birthday and then they could, of course, enjoy the cake and then they could actually take the succulent and then put that in a flower pot at home or actually use the container and just put um, sort of uh, some soil in there and put the succulent in there or some styrofoam and some soil on the top and uh, keep that as a memento of the birthday. So there's lots of uh, ideas uh, for there. 
Yeah, so also um, other cute ideas, for example, for a brunch, you know, when you serve brunch, these are espresso cups. So again, the espresso cups work really, really well. So I've done this in the same concept as the Vareen where I've actually layered the cake and things. And again, you can then of course finish that off and you could have a beautiful, you can imagine serving that as a brunch. Um, you could do these for dinner parties and lots of sort of fun things with that. Um, so Vareens are very useful. This is a little espresso cup as well. So it would be nice for springtime. And of course the succulent colors could be varied uh, depending on uh, what you're going to use it with. So here you can see this would be a sort of elements of a plated dessert using the succulents. So here I have a little bar gâteau. So this is a chocolate cake with obviously chocolate buttercream. And I put some of the uh, chocolate crumbs here. I have obviously chocolate rocks. I have the smallest succulent, which is a little tiny one that I did on the angel hair pasta. And then obviously I've cut the piece of cake and then I have the medium and a large one here on uh, pasta as well. So totally edible, but just giving you ideas of like using them for other presentations in pastry. Here we have um, a glass bowl, all right? So it's like a fish bowl uh, style. Um, and uh, so what I've done is I put chocolate crumb in the bottom. Again, I have a chocolate cake uh, covered with ganache, and then I put some chocolate rocks, and then again, I put the succulent here. Um, so again, will be a very nice presentation for a sort of formal dinner or something, as I said, like a wedding uh, to give you ideas. And then here we have a petit gâteau, and then also I have a macaron, French macaron pistachio. So uh, of course here I've got the little mini succulent. I just make a hole with like a cookie scribe needle in the macaron and uh, to obviously accommodate the spaghetti. And then I have again some chocolate dirt, little chocolate rocks, and I have the small macaron. And then I have the uh, larger one, the large size one uh, that I made on the spaghetti uh, put here on the petit gâteau has got some chocolate nibs around the side of it. So this just gives you ideas for uh, entertaining and obviously making desserts using your succulent. So here we have some cupcakes. Uh, so first of all is chocolate cupcake. I put the chocolate buttercream and then the cookie crumbs on here. And then I have obviously some little succulents. Again, remember these are all on um, spaghetti or angel hair pasta like shown in video two. Uh, so that it makes it totally edible. You never ever want to use wires for something like this it's going to be consumed in one bite or two bites and uh, little chocolate rocks uh, here i have uh, a vanilla cupcake obviously mascarpone cream cheese and then obviously a little brown sugar and then obviously cookie crumbs and a little succulent on here and this is a really really cute idea again for sort of brunch this is a uh, an egg cup and uh, what I did there is you use either a mini cupcake or this is obviously just um, when you do a brownie batter, just bake it in a little small tart pan. And then you can actually put, again, I just put some chocolate buttercream in the bottom, a little bit of uh, um, caramel, the sea salt caramel. Then I put the little like almost a brownie puck, put that into there or mini cupcake fits well, just take them out of the wrapper and then you do the soil. And again, this is a really nice, uh, presentation, like for example, for Easter, you could do these for everybody as a place setting, a little tiny succulent garden. So those are some ideas for cupcakes. So I hope you've enjoyed this third part of the succulent uh, video showing how to use my Flower Pro succulent mold. And in addition, Katie Sue's new succulent pots mold. And uh, to combine together, obviously these make a really winning combination for all of your cakes and obviously cookies, cupcakes, and decorations for as their desserts. So until next time, sweet wishes, it's been Chef Nicholas Lodge, bye.